Rub up your engines! Okay, today we got a brand new 2023 Ridge Line. Is it good? Is it bad? Why did the guy buy it? Of all the trucks that are out there? Well, you're gonna find out so you can make a wise decision yourself. He had four Toyota Camrys. That's all he had, right? Average 10 year each. Hey, he's gotten his money's worth, right? So he drove the Camry and he thought, I'll try out this Honda Ridge Line. And his friend said, oh, they're gonna think we're girlies driving this thing around. It's a girly car. It is not a girly truck. It is what you might call a specialty truck. Honda said they built them for Honda owners that wanna get a pickup truck. Well, he was a Toyota driver and he didn't get a Toyota pickup. He got this because he likes the way that this thing Right. Because unlike my son's Tacoma, which has a full frame, this ridge line is a unibody construction. It rides much better, the Honda. And with the Honda suspension system, he got in this thing and he said, I'm not even gonna go to the Ford dealer. I'm gonna buy this thing. Now you might say, why didn't he get a Ford Maverick? Well, the Maverick's built in Mexico. This is built in the United States, right? He didn't want to mess with something that was brand new made in Mexico. I don't blame him. And now that I see they've been out for a little while and they're having a lot of problems, probably a smart move, but these only come in all wheel drive and Honda makes pretty good all wheel drive systems. He's not gonna get stuck. He said it went fine in the snow, the one big snow in Tennessee, a few inches, right? <laughs> He's not pulling tons. You can pull 5,000 pounds with this, but that's not why he got this. Something's gonna last a long time. Honda's generally last a long time. He's not pulling a lot of weight. He didn't care about a gigantic bed. Now, as you can see, it's got a regular tailgate bus. There's a little handle and Voila! The best of both worlds. And since it's a Honda, it's probably not gonna break. Now, under here, as you can see, nice space. There is a drain under here. So you can use this as a giant ice bucket if you want, or leave the drain shut. You can put your luggage and suitcase in it. And check this out. What's hiding in here? You got yourself 115 volt receptacle. One guy uses a TV here, has tailgate parties, and watch this. Our speaker's hiding in here. Check it out. Well, what do they think of next? Now, when you look at it, you think, Oh, that's all plastic, but I don't know, the sound goes through it. It sounds really good. So typical Japanese fashion, Honda keeps improving these things. Now, they're not like Ford, Ram, everybody else. Oh, every few years we gotta refresh it, we gotta change it. No, they really don't do that. But see, Honda's not competing with Ram, Chevy, in the pickup wars. They know it. They generally sell around 40,000 of these every year, like clockwork, right? Because people buy them, they want a particular truck like this, they're totally happy with it. He wants a nice ride. He doesn't want a full frame that doesn't ride as nice. And he didn't want a chance at Maverick. I don't blame him, he made a wide decision. The Maverick, all the problems those things are having. Got a very reliable, V6 Honda engine, the 3.5 liter. It does have that stupid stop start feature. So he watches my videos. Every time he starts it, he pushes turn off the start stop. So it doesn't. He drives this thing for Uber. He doesn't want the annoyance and he knows that's gonna wear your engine out faster. It's just a gimmick people are throwing in. At least Honda's got the button, you push it every time, and voila, that's his habit. Get in, start truck, push button, and then he didn't have to think about it anymore. If you own one, I advise doing that. The only downside, as you can see here with the plastic covers is, it does have a rubber timing belt. So you're supposed to change every 100,000 miles. He usually keeps his vehicles 100,000 miles, and you want the absolute truth about it. I worked on the original Hondas that had the two-cylinder motors cycle engine, right? I've seen these things with 200,000 miles on them. The timing belt was never touched and they still ran perfectly fine. That's a gamble you'd have to take because they are interference engines. But Honda makes them pretty well. And you know how many of these timing belts that I've seen broke? Okay, technically I saw one and it was the original Acura V6, right? And it had 370,000 miles with the original belt. And I told the customer, okay, this was it's gonna cost. He says, oh, that thing's old, I don't care. And then eventually it broke, and then he just sent it to a junkyard. It's considering that he bought it new when he put 375,000 miles. I'd say he got his money out of the car. And it's got a memory seat. All kinds of buttons for your phone. We'll turn that off so we don't have to listen to it. Simple cruise control, it's intelligent cruise control. Economy, if you wanna get a little bit better gas mileage. You can have parking sense on or off, lane change. 
You can turn that stuff off, traction control, heated seats, both sides. One of the things I like is, look, your whole control system here. Look, it was designed, it fits right in. I like something like this. I don't like things sticking up. That's just me. I want a clear view. These are specialty trucks. It does have a sunroof. Now I'm trying out a new scan tool. This is like a $370 scan tool. It's called RT Diag Pro Top Down. We'll see how it works. Now I'm doing this because a lot of people say, Scott, you're always using that fancy $5,000 scan tool. We're never going to buy blah, blah, blah. Well, this one's only $375. We'll see what it can do. Now we're going to have to wait a second because I just updated the firmware. You can see it's updating it. And the company claims you get two years of free firmware updating. So we'll see how that works over time. That's like one of those slot machines. The numbers are coming up. There it is. Knows it's 2023 Honda. And the transmission, all these different systems so far. Looks like it's doing quite a bit for a $370 scan tool. Road for the BCM. Lost communication with power window master switch. Power C control lost communication with power master switch. Yeah, maybe got wet or something. On a ZAC system. Lost communication with the power window master switch. Uh, what the AC system has to do with the master switch is beyond me. Now we can see they're all gone, so let's look at some live data. We'll start her up. We'll look at live data. See, we get a lot of data. It's got 303 points, so we'll select them all and start looking at them. First thing I noticed, it's different than my other scan tools in that normal is blue. Usually it's black. This is blue, so let's we'll start going through stuff. Fuel ratio is almost perfect, 0 0.99. Every once in a while it goes to 1. There it is, 1.00, which is perfect. And look at all this data it has for the air fuel system. This is just all air fuel system data. Battery's normal, charging voltage. It even shows you the battery sensor current, which presently is 18.38 amps. Temperature's perfect. You can see cylinder misfire, 0 all the way down. Shows you with the inverter that this thing has. See this particular scanner does an awful lot of information. Now, now you'll see it's a little slower than my fancy one. See, you gotta wait for it to fill in. My other one's instantaneous. This one, you scroll up. If you get through a certain amount, you gotta wait for them to come. But then they come up. And all the data looks good. And if you're curious what it all looks like, here we go, watch. Dee, 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 dee. Remember, there's 320 of these babies. As long as we're here checking it out. Look at all the services it can do. Air, fuel reset, brake reset, oil reset, SAS reset, battery reset when you change your battery if you got a car that needs it. Bleeding the ABS system, resetting your tire pressure monitoring system, electronic throttle relearn, and more and more and more gear learn, intelligent cruise control system, all the way down to windows calibration, or tire reset if you change the size of your tire. So I gotta say, for 370 bucks or so, this looks like a pretty good scan tool so far. Stay tuned, we'll see how it goes over the years. While well, I was talking to the owner, I figured out what happened. Why'd well, I have this car for the switch? He drives Uber and there was a wreck on a highway outside of Nashville, and he got out of the car, forgetting that, he had left in drive. And when he opened up the door, the engine turned itself off. And he thought, what did I do? I ruined my new truck, right? Well, it's a safety thing. So you can't have it in gear and it'll be driving away when you got the door open. I've reset it. And odds are it's not going to come back unless I'm dumb enough to leave it driving and jump out the door. It saves both you and it saves your truck from driving away and hitting somebody else. So now we got it in reverse. You can see it's got a nice wide angle camera. I like that camera angle. I can see the lions. I can see the mailbox. I really have a good view. It's a really nice backup camera. I can't stand those little ones. This one is really good and I can see. Okay, it's saying don't get too close to that mailbox, so I won't. First thing I see, it's smooth as can be. Like the owner said, he got in this thing, he drove and he said, man, this thing rides almost as good as my Camry and he bought it. He didn't bother looking at the Fords. Just because of the less unsprung weight and other differences in flexibility, a unibody vehicle rides much smoother. That's one reason you see most vehicles being built that way. Aside from the that it's cheaper to build them that way <laughs> and they weigh less so they get slightly better gas mileage now let's get to our little drag strip here now this isn't a screaming v8 it's a v6 and it is an all-wheel drive so it's going to handle really good let's see how it takes off and ready steady go it just kicked in there Bye. Now, the owner watched a lot of my videos, spent a lot of time deciding what to get, and he said he's totally happy, other than that stupid stop-start thing that he doesn't like. He's totally happy with what it does. 
He uses it for Uber. He likes going out in the country. He's not pulling any heavy loads. He can pull his boat or whatever he wants with the thing. It'll tow 5,000 pounds. And for a pickup truck, it's surprisingly quiet. The only thing I hear are the tires, which are relatively aggressive tread on this thing. If you like less noise, yeah, you can go for smoother tires. Very smooth shifting. It's Honda's nine-speed automatic, not CVT, an actual automatic, and it's smooth. And it also doesn't hunt for gears, like the Fords often do. So what do I think about this? Is it a real? truck well in some respects it's better than a real truck yeah it's not heavy load pulling truck but for what it is it's about as close as perfection as you can get as you saw in this thing it does not hunt for gears with the unibody construction a nice engine nine speed tranny this thing is smooth if you're looking for a smooth pickup that you can occasionally do trucky things with you certainly can tailgate with a fancy tailgate you might think about getting one of these things the honda you know they're gonna last quite some time other than that stupid start stop button you got to keep pushing to turn it off it's annoying as can be you can drive it hard still get mid-20s gas mileage in a truck that's as fast as this and fun to drive the ridge lines they're not for everybody but for the people who want a vehicle like this pretty good choice there aren't that many of them out there with all the features that this thing has and sure you're not going to be towing 15,000 pounds, you know? It's all-wheel drive. You're not going to get stuck anywhere. Plenty high enough in the ground. And it's a Honda that will probably outlast you if you drive it conservatively enough. <laughs> it's not a rock climber. You take it rock climbing, yeah, you'll probably flip the thing over, right? And you like a nice ride? Road test one first, you know? I mean, I've road tested the Mavericks. I like the way they ride. But seeing that they're made in Mexico, I was always kind of iffy, and now I'm really iffy because I see people who have, and they have problems. I have customers with these things. One guy runs a plumbing company. He's got all his plumbing tools on a cap on the back. He owns two of these things. He's got like 220 on each one, and he's still driving them. So they can be a work truck too. And if you're thinking about getting one, I just say, go road test one first. See what you think. He road tests this, and he bought it. He didn't even road test any other ones. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a guy who had nothing but Toyota Camrys. He wanted a truck, this is the truck he got. He didn't get the Toyota because he didn't like his sons, how it handled, how it drove on a highway, and he loves this. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.